Hi, the message you are about to listen to is brought to you by House 316. Remain blessed as you listen. Father, we thank you. As a church, we say thank you. As individuals, we say thank you. We give you praise, we give you glory. Okay, so Numbers chapter 21 verse 1. The king of Arad, the Canaanite, who dwelt in the south, heard that um, Israel was coming on the road to... Okay, next verse. So Israel made a vow to... Okay, um, next verse. Okay, next verse. All right, so I'll start from here. Then they journeyed, that's the children of Israel. You know, Moses went to Egypt. You guys remember the story? He went to Egypt. Say, please listen carefully. Oh. Listen carefully. Then he, he was able to free the children of Israel. Okay? Do you know who Israel was? That's Jacob. You guys remember Jacob? Um, you remember Abraham? Abraham gave birth to the promised son called Isaac. He gave birth to Ishmael. But Ishmael was not a, uh, a promised Okay? So he, Isaac was the promised son. And then Isaac married Rebekah. And they gave birth to twins. Jacob, no, Esau and Jacob. Esau was the first born. Then Jacob. Okay? Then you guys remember the story? Jacob fought an angel. He wrestled an angel all through the night. And I told you there's a mystery we're going to check out, uh, okay, in that. How can a human wrestle an angel all through the night. Is that possible? So there's some, there are a lot of things that happen there. We're going to check them out, okay? So he wrestled and the angel changed his name to Israel. Okay? So an Israel gave birth, that's Jacob, gave birth to 12 children. You guys remember them? Huh? You guys should be responding to me. Joseph was sold by those people. Uh, was sold by his brothers. They took him to Egypt. Okay? So when he became uh, a prime minister in Egypt, he he brought his 12, uh, his 11 brothers, his father, his entire family. So the whole of Israel came to Egypt. Okay? So when that king died, another king came that didn't know who Joseph was, what he did. Okay? He started because they, they were they were strangers. They were rich, they were doing stuff, they were giving birth easily and all of that. So they were multiplying. So the king was angry and then they started punishing them and then they enslaved them. They became slaves in Egypt. You guys now remember the story? Then Moses now came. You, you know the story. Then he now freed them. Okay? You guys remember? And then God told promised them that he was going to take them to a land that flows with milk and honey and it's called Canaan. Alright? Canaan land. So, they started moving, trekking, trekking, trekking. They, they, they crossed the Red Sea, uh, you know, climb mountains. They would tent here, eat food and all that. Then they will move. Good. So, until they're here now. <laughs> Okay, all these that I mentioned, I'll make reference to them. That's why I took time to summarize them. I'll make reference to some places I've just summarized. Then they journeyed from Mount Hur by the way of the Red Sea to go around the land of Edom. Okay, and the soul of the people became very discouraged on the way, they were discouraged, they were weak. Okay? Everybody look. Look up. Look up. Okay? And the people spoke against God. If you see the previous verse before this, you see that one of the reasons why they spoke against 
God was because uh, they became very discouraged. Not that they became discouraged. Very discouraged. So because they were discouraged, they spoke against God and against Moses. Do you know why they had to speak against Moses? Because Moses was um, the voice of God at that time. He represented the voice of God. So they had to speak against him too. Why have you brought us up out of Egypt? Can you see? Why? Egypt, you have allowed us to be in Egypt. Uh -huh. Instead of dying here in the wilderness. No food, no water. And our soul lotus this wordless bread. The bread that God was giving them for free. Okay? They are tired of eating the bread. Next verse. So the Lord sent, you see, so the Lord, right? So because of what they did, God had to punish them. Okay? Um, please listen carefully. Let me tell you a principle. Every sin, every sin has its punishment, including the ones that you have repented from. It will always have its consequences. Always. You see that? So for those of you that are very smart in your mind, you know that there's, there's what is called the mercy of God. So in your mind you say, I will sin, then I will come and tap from God's mercy so God will forgive me. Yes, God will forgive you. Okay? But you will have to face the consequences of that sin. He will forgive you. But there is always a consequences. All, see, always. It's a constant. It's a principle. Is that okay? That's why you could see even Moses himself. Do you know that as far as the scripture is concerned, Moses was one of the only people that God, God talked to face to face. We saw that last week. You guys remember? He spoke to him face to face. That's how close Moses and God were. Very, very close. So much close that when he died, it was God himself that did the burial. Not, not, even, not even the people. God himself did the burial, covered, so nobody will even know where the, the, the grave is. You see, now that's how close they are. But, and he walked with, do you know how stubborn these guys were? They were very stubborn. Very, very stubborn people. Okay, are you getting me? Hello, are you getting me? But when God instructed him to speak to the rocks so that water will come, he struck the rock instead. And still, the water came. And God told him, because of this, huh? because of this, you will not see the promised land. In fact, and you know, the, you know what? It was him and Aaron that went to see God. And God told them, go and do this so that water will come. He and Aaron. Will. But if you read that portion very well, you see that they went with Aaron, they lied down, and God spoke to Moses. Then they stood up, and then Moses went and did, and struck the rock, and water came. And God said, you and Aaron will die. You will not see the promise. So, in fact, it was Aaron that died first. Before this story, Aaron has died already. They went to the mountain and said, hey, you did, you will die now. <laughs> and that was the consequences. So, are we getting down? Some could be delayed because of the sin. God will delay you. The consequences of the sin will be delayed. You will you, you be delayed for something. So, so the Lord sent fiery serpents among the people and they beat the people, bite the people. That's the passage of bite, okay? They beat the people and many of the people of Israel died. Therefore, the people came to Moses. Because of that, they came to Moses. We have seen, now, if you read the story of um, Exodus, 
of children of Israel from Egypt, you find out that this is the first time that the children of Israel came to ask for forgiveness. First time. It has never happened. First time. Here. Okay? We have sinned. They have never said it before. This is the first time. For we have spoken against the Lord and against you. Pray to the Lord that he take away the serpents from us. So, Moses prayed for the people. Then the Lord said to Moses, make a fairy serpent again and set it on a pole and it shall be that everyone who is beaten, when he looks at it, shall live. So Moses made a bronze serpent and put it on a pole and so it was. If a serpent had beaten anyone, when he looked at the bronze serpent, he lived. Praise God. That's all. So we're going to check out four things from this story. Are you ready? Are you ready? Now let me do a little analysis for you as I draw these four points. I wanted to find out why did these children of Israel got discouraged, got so weak and they spoke against Moses. Why? And I went back to chapter 20 and I found out that these were some of the reasons why um, um, the, the children of Israel became weak and discouraged. You know, they were moving. They were moving. Uh, the, the Bible says towards um, north West. They were moving towards the northwest to the Canaan land. And on their way, they will have to pass through a city. The city of Edom. They will have to pass through it. Okay? So when they were going, when they got close to the city of Edom, Moses sent uh, some of the people to the king of Edom. And pleaded with him, please, we are passing. Allow us to pass. We are not going to touch anything in your city. We are not going to drink water. We are not going to eat your food. We will not touch you. We will just pass. We will not even sleep. We will just pass. The guy said, no way. The guy said, please, we beg you, sir. We will just pass. In fact, if by peradventure one of us eats your food or drink your water, we will pay. Just allow us to pass. The guy said, no, we will not pass. No way, you guys will not pass. So, the children of Israel came back, uh, the messengers came back, and then Moses had to decide. Northwest. Okay? Um, um, the, you know the cardinal points in geography. There's north, north, east, no, east, north, east, south, west. Okay? North, uh, east, south, west. North and south are always like this, okay? So, so, uh, so when you have north and south, uh, um, and this is west, if you're going northwest, it means you're going this way. Okay, so they were actually going this way. So let's assume they were going this way to Canaan land. And when they brought back the news, they'll have to they had to change to um, south east. Okay, so that was like almost 180 degrees, and they had to go through the mountain. So it was like. This was the shortcut to where we are going. We are not going to touch you. Just pass through the city. They had to change. So let me give you a pictorial illustration. It's like from Yeba, here, you are going to Abuja. From Joss, you are going to Abuja. How do you go to Abuja? You just go straight. Okay? Like this from here. You go, you pass through Bukuru. You go to Maraban Jama. You go to Kuru, Riyom. 
and then you go to Abuja, right? So from here to Abuja is like, uh, let's say four hours. Um, when you drive slowly like us, if it's Delta, it's three hours. Delta drives fast. I always want you drive. You know, drive. Ah. You see Ben Yeva. <laughs> so when you drive slowly, um, it's, uh, <laughs> it's four hours from here to Abuja. Okay? Then you will not be instructed that instead of going through this way, or even following through Kaduna, they'll tell you that you must go through Zaria. So for, instead of going this way, you will now go to Zaria, go to Kaduna, and then go to Abuja. From here to Zaria alone is four hours. <laughs> then there's Zaria to Kaduna after one hour. Then from Kaduna to Abuja is like two, three hours. So you see that that's like the, so it was exactly what happened. So instead of them passing through that city, they now have to turn back. And I asked myself, why? Because if you look at the story, uh, before this thing happened, these guys had fought the king of Arab and won him. In fact, they have been they have been dealing destroying cities before now. So why wouldn't they destroy Edom? And then I found out the reason. I'll tell you why. See, hello, please listen to me carefully. Okay, listen to me carefully. Some of you, God's, God's promise to you in your destiny is when you are when you are twelve, when you are uh, twenty years old, you will achieve this. And something will happen. You have to go back. It's frustrating. And that's why some of you have lost confidence in church, have lost confidence in men of God, have lost confidence in your pastors. You be coming to the church so and you think that yeah, is close, close, then something will happen, and then all of a sudden you are back to square one and you get discouraged. And some of you even speak against your pastors. Now Magana when they attach you, and maybe he's guilty also. He doesn't want to hear, he doesn't want to hear that part. <laughs> <laughs> so are you getting me? So there, there's actually a practical application to what I'm saying. I need you to just follow. Is that okay? So I f- tried to find out why, and I found out in Deuteronomy. Give me um, Deuteronomy chapter five, chapter two, verse four and five. Deuteronomy chapter two, and command the people saying. You are about to pass through the territory of your brethren, the descendants of Esau, who live in Seir, and they will be afraid of you. Therefore, watch yourselves carefully. Next. Do not mingle with them, for I will not give you any of their land. No, no, not so much as one footstep, because I have given my Seir to, to Esau as a position. Hold on. Ah, are you getting me? You see that? So these people, no matter what you do, I will not give you even one step like this. Like, okay, like this. Imagine like, like Joss and God is saying, I will not even give you this time, this space. I will not give you. So don't even fight them. Okay? Now, who are these guys? Uh, because here is um, Esau. Did you see that? So go to Genesis chapter 36 verse 1. Genesis 36 verse 1. Now, this is the genealogy of Esau, who is Edom. You see that? So, is it a proof now that Edom actually Esau? Edom is Esau. Do, do I agree? Do I agree? I love you that will challenge say No, I don't agree. Then I'll show you more verses again. <laughs> okay, so Esau actually Edom. You guys remember Esau? Esau was what? Brother to who? Say it now. Brother to who? In fact, he was the first... He was the firstborn. You guys remember? They were twins. When he came out of his mother's womb, when he was coming out of his mother's womb, Jacob, who was Israel, was holding his leg. You will not go, I will go. You go, he wanted to be first. So even from the womb, his Israel, who was Jacob, was fighting this guy. And then, now that took me to the story, uh, which um, they, um, should be Genesis 25 or so. Okay, and I found out the story. You guys remember the story of Jacob and Esau? Jacob, who was Israel, okay, was the second born. 
One time, we all know the story. Esau, who was Edom, came back and he was tired and hungry. He was skillful in hunting. He was a hunter. Edom. So he came back from hunting. He could not kill any animal. He came back hungry. And then Edom was a farmer. He has food and all that. Sorry, Jacob. So he asked Jacob, please, I need food. And Jacob was a smart guy. Now, you guys should be learning what I'm saying here. Please learn. Okay? And then he told him, um, I need food. If you give me food, I'll be so happy. I said, brother, please serve me with food. The guy said, no, I'm not going to give you food. The guy said, please, if you don't give me food, I will die. Now that's a lie, and I'm going to prove that. If you don't give me food, I will die. And the guy said, oh, yeah, okay, if that's the case, I can give you food. And you know the food is stew, stew and bread. If I give you my stew and bread, you give me your birthright. The guy didn't think. He just said, yes, take the birthright. Give me stew and bread. And he gave him eight. The Bible says, after he finished eating, he went away. Then, let me analyze something here. This guy was not going to die. One meal cannot kill you. Instead, it was an expression of how how he has despised the birthright. It didn't mean anything to him. Are you getting me? It didn't mean anything to him. Imagine if someone meets you and tells you, please just give me your phone. Let me just make one call. I need to call my father now. There's something that's good. And you just give me one minute and I'll give you 10K. Now, you know, you don't need to, you don't need to think like uh, just my one phone call. Maybe your phone is 2-5. If I take the phone, my dash, <laughs> like it's nothing. So it's the same thing. Are you getting me? Not that, not that there's, there's, he was going to die. He despised the birthright. Then the second time, he despised the birthright, but somebody was eyeing it. Somebody was calculating how to get it right from the womb. Are you seeing that? Do you know that many of us here have plenty of things that we're despising? Yet some people are dying to get cut out of that. So people will say they will die if you don't have this. You, you have it, but you despise it. The second time was when their father was going to die, Isaac. Isaac was going to die, so he needed to bless Esau because the Bible made a description that um, Isaac, Isaac, uh, no, um, yes, Isaac, Isaac loved. Esau, while Rebekah loved Jacob. Okay? So he was not, and he knew, and Esau was the firstborn. Okay? Um, some, some scholars, okay, just to highlight it, uh, just to mention it, some scholars believe that that was the origin of blacks, the origin of the white, because uh, the Bible described Isaac as white, like white. The, the guy was red. Esau, red. That Esau was red. So if Esau was red, it means that guy will have been black. It means that every other person was black, black, until the first time one red guy came. So that's the, that's the origin. <laughs> yeah. You know, not so Jim or just so there's this my my relative Ronald tells you. Say she was very um inquisitive. So tell them when I training her with this lyrical job. So she came and said, Uncle, not so yet to make her name. So she asked um uh what did judge him what time they get Okay, okay, okay. When we do the exercise, she wanted to tell you something. You guys, you remember? You don't want to hear what she says. It's very, very funny. But 
ya ni mbata jima kena niki so well that's by the way okay um 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 so 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 the mother was wise and smart to make Jacob receive the blessings you guys remember so he received the blessing and then Esau swore that he was going to kill him okay there's something that was very interesting there are so many things but okay um, so when Esau came back and he said uh, father I brought the food and all that he said ah I've me, 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 I've blessed your brother already. He said, ah, no, he said, no, there's no any blessings remaining. That all the blessings he has given the blessings of the uh heaven due that which, which is food, and um he um all nations shall bow to him. Okay, all nations shall bow to him. Um the implication of that statement was um um, Edom was going to bow to him even as the first child. So he has given all the blessings. The guy insisted, he so that if if, if it's any other he should search, okay. And then his father blessed him. He gave him a position, and that's where we read in Deuteronomy chapter two, verse four and five. He's going to possess this land uh, and all that and all that. Uh, are you getting me? So the guy, that's all. Uh, and the guy said that if his father dies after the morning, he's going to kill Jacob. And then the mother said, run! Go to my brother, Laban. The guy that originated Lebanese. Go to my brother, Laban. And what, what? Is that okay? So Rebecca was actually Lebanese. <laughs> Praise God. So are we getting that? So the guy left and all that and all that. Now these people have died. All the children of Israel were the descendants of Jacob. All the Edomites were the descendants of Satan. Descendants of what? Esau. Are you getting that? Now, so when these guys came to pass, can you see? The logical reason why the Edomites swore that you should not pass through this place. You've seen that, right? It's a long time beef. It has been there. It is the story has been. Can you remember? Can you just see how many years? What thousands of years? But we now know the story. So imagine during their time, they know the stories. They know that yes, they are our brothers, but they cheated us. They cannot pass through our land. You cheated our father. You collected the blessings. You 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 stole the bad right. But is it stealing? Did he steal the bad right? It was an exchange. You you don't need this. I need it. Me up to now, I don't see. I don't know. I'm, I I love it. You you don't like it. He really gave. But he actually took advantage. Yeah, that, so it's, it's not a good one, right? Because he took advantage. So, so it's very painful, right? And then the worst one was he came and collected the blessings. He even lied. Can you see how blessings follow you? Even if you lie, as far as you are blessed, you are blessed. Because he lied. He, his father, so Isaac said, the voice is not Esau. But the skin is Esau. Are you sure you are? He said, Yes, I am. Go and check the, 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 do you want to check that? Okay. Okay. It's time to justify it. <laughs> he didn't ask him if you are the first, we asked him if you are Esau. But he was not Esau. Amen. So he collected the blessing and then he was blessed. And then he left. So these girls were holding the beef. And now you want to come and pass and go to I okay, so even if I were the one, but I can watch you. I'm serious, I can watch you. You cheated me. And you want to come and pass here. You will not pass. So and 
These guys will have fought them. But they have been warned never to fight their brothers. Are you seeing that? So that's why they didn't fight. That's why they had to go round. Are you getting me? Praise God. Don't worry. We hit the point. Now, let's come back um, um, to the situation. So now, these guys had to turn back and then they became so discouraged. Highly discouraged. It was the accumulation of all these things that made them to insult. Okay? To insult who? Moses and God. Amen. So, uh, I'm going to bring out some lessons for, and then that's all. Number one lesson is when things are not moving well, we tend to insult God. Where, where is it now? Uh huh. And the people, okay, they spoke against God. And then the next one is why complained? They spoke against God and then they complained. They spoke against uh, um, uh, the man of God. Praise God. I've seen a lot, lot of people that have lost their blessings because they turned or spoke against God or against the man of God. Some of you, you have received prophecies from God through some vessels and it turned out not to be how you have imagined it or expected it to be. And because of that, not really verbally, maybe in your behavior, in your thoughts, you spoke against God or against that man of God. You see that? So what God will do is, he will bring you into even a deeper issues. That's exactly what happened. Amen. Number two lesson, Second Chronicles chapter 7 verse 15, 14. Number two lesson is when you, when you are wrong and you find out, please confess. Go and meet the pastor and confess. That's number two lesson. Go. Say, I'm wrong. I'm sorry. The children of Israel did that. And that's why the Bible says, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven, forgive their sins and heal their land. Number three lesson. Numbers chapter 21 verse 8. Then the Lord said to Moses, Make a fairy serpent and set it on a pole. And it shall be that everyone who is beaten, when he looks at it, shall live. Now look at it. Serpents were killing these guys. They came and repented. Right? And now Moses instructed them. Say, okay. Um... Okay, Moses went and see God's face and God told him, make a serpent from bronze. Make a serpent, put it in a pole. Everyone that looks up to it will be healed. The same serpent that were killing us, you do the symbol, put it up, and you tell me to look up and to save me. Do you know that even Moses didn't even understand this instruction? Moses, do you know why Moses didn't understand this instruction? In fact, it was even more confusing to Moses. Moses knows, you know know who Moses was, right? Okay? Scholars told us that uh, when Moses saw the back of God, that's how Genesis was written and all that, he actually gave the account of the creation. So who is supposed to tell who the story? Him. Nobody knows this story better than Moses. He knew that it was if that was deceived by serpent. Serpent was a symbol of um, deception. The children of Israel knew that. They knew that the serpent represent Satan. 
They knew the story. But God told him they should do a representation of that serpent. And whoever looks up, that was completely foolish. There's no sense in it. And the issue is the solution of the problem is the problem. How does that make sense? Are you getting me? Why God didn't tell them, okay, go and do a symbol of dove? And when you look at that, that would have been uh, better. That was the reason why I believe so much that many people refuse to look up to the serpent. Praise God. It's a great lesson to learn from. That is why faith is not just the definition you, you guys have heard before. It's, it's not just uh, that. Faith is beyond um, all the definitions you've heard about faith. But faith is also obedience to God's word. When God told Abraham, slaughter your son Isaac, that obedience was counted to him as faith. That's why he became the father of faith. He obeyed. It was a foolish thing to do. The son that you waited for years and you asked to slaughter him and you obeyed. The lesson is very obvious. Some of you, you've been instructed by your pastor. You've been instructed by God through your pastor. And, it's, and look, let me tell you, some of the instructions, the pastors don't even know why they're doing saying it. They don't, they can't give um, any logical explanation to it. Yours is to just obey. Praise God. Now let me conclude. In conclusion, this is my conclusion. Go to John chapter 3 verse 14. John chapter 3 verse 14. And this is Jesus speaking. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the son of man be lifted up. Do you see that Jesus made a comparison of him to that serpent? Are you seeing that? Meaning that 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 happened was actually a preparation of Jesus coming. Next verse. That whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. You see that? The same manner that that serpent was lifted up and God commanded that whoever look up to will be saved. In the same manner, Jesus was lifted up. And guess what? At that point that Jesus was lifted up, he carried all the sins of the world. Yet, the Bible says, whoever look up to him will be saved from that sin. You see that? The solution coming from the problem. Same thing. At that time, Jesus, at that time, Jesus carried the whole scene. And that's why, that's why uh, there's a description of heaven turning away from Jesus because he was carrying the scene of the world. Yet, he was the solution. You know, the good thing about the scriptures and the ways of God is he prepares stuff right far from uh, the future. And when the future comes, it just click. Galatians chapter 3. Verse 13. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, having become a curse for us. For it's written, curse is everyone who hangs on a tree. At that point, Jesus was cursed. And it's the same curse, that same representation of curse that the solution comes from. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 18. For the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing but to us who are being saved it is the power of God can you see 
The message is foolishness to those who are perishing. If you're going through any situation and you know the promises of God concerning you, please hold on. Is that okay? Hold on. Don't give up. Some people don't come to church again because one, two, four years, five years, and it seems to them there's no growth. It seems to them there's nothing that is uh, developing. There's nothing good coming out of coming to the church and serving. Please, if you're listening to me, hold on. Hold on. Praise God. So if you are listening to me, please. And number two, you must identify your pastor who speaks to you. God will always speak to you. We, we saw that last week in Numbers chapter 12 or so. When Aaron and Miriam said, is it only Moses that God speaks to? He also speaks to us. We also saw where uh, God told these guys that uh, my prophets, I speak to them through visions, um, through dreams and all that. But Moses, I speak to him face to face. Nobody should deceive you. Nobody should deceive you. I'm telling the truth. Nobody should deceive you. Amen. Father, we thank you for today. We give you glory. Thank you for your word that is here. And amen. Thank you for exposing your truths to us. Thank you for the revelation of your word, O oh God. Help us, O oh God, to believe in your servants. Help us to believe in your word and be obedient to your word, O oh God. We hope you enjoyed the message. For more messages, prayers, and counseling, please call this numbers 08065. 783427 or 08061584663 so love